Hi everyone, my name is Marcus and you're watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about tang aggression and how to keep more than one tang in a larger reef tank. So inevitably in the hobby, most of us gravitate towards larger tanks. And one of the reasons for this is not only to be able to keep uh, more and more and more coral, but also to be able to keep larger fish and more of them. One of the most popular fish to keep in reef aquarium are tangs. There's so many different varieties and subspecies. Uh, some of them are really common, some of them are really rare, but in general, they're really great fish that add huge amounts of personality, color, and energy to a reef tank. Unfortunately, just like with people, not all tangs get along and sometimes there can be fighting and territorial issues and aggression between different tangs in a reef tank. And as a result, there's always going to be some considerations towards managing aggression when keeping more than one tang in a reef tank. Today I want to give you five really good tips on how to manage aggression with tangs in a reef tank. So the first one is the simplest and might seem the most obvious but it's to make sure you're feeding your fish appropriately. Tangs eat a lot, much more than you might expect. If you've come from just keeping clownfish in a small nano to then uh, say a four or five foot uh, tank where you've introduced two tangs, the amount that you need to feed them might really surprise you. Tangs are voracious eaters and they will eat almost all types of food. They are algae eaters, so they pick up your rock work all day. They'll graze any algae that's in your tank. In addition to that, they'll eat meaty foods, pellets, flakes. They'll eat mysis and brine. They'll eat sheets of nori off clips and basically everything else you can put in the tank, the tangs will generally eat. They do like to eat multiple times a day and they do like to eat quite a lot. And if they're not being fed appropriately, they will become much more territorial and aggressive about their territory, which of course is just a glass box, and as a result, more unfriendly to their peers, aka other tangs. In that instance, the larger or the more aggressive one will typically bully or dominate the other one, and that can cause significant problems. Sometimes it can cause so much many problems that it could be the death of the weaker fish. So when trying to keep your tanks fat and well-fed and healthy, here's some strategies. You want to feed a broadcast style food to the tank all at once so that the food fills the tank and all of the fish are able to eat continuously and actively. Whilst nori clips are good and feeding nori to tanks is essential for their long-term health, one clip with multiple fish is often not always the answer because the most aggressive fish will tend to dominate it and the other fish won't get a chance to get in there. Broadcasting food to the tank where the entire tank becomes filled with food allows every fish to eat and the most aggressive fish won't be able to dominate the food source. Number two, research the subspecies of tang that you have. For example, zebramosa tangs or the, the yellow tang type of tang that has that most uh, stereotypical look to a tang fish are generally very aggressive against other tangs of the same body shape or subspecies Zebramosa. Many people have a lot more luck mixing tangs from other subspecies. So for example, yellow tangs are of the subspecies Zebramosa and blue tangs are of the subspecies Paracantharus. And as a result, they rarely fight amongst each other. They don't see each other as the same type of fish and therefore they don't necessarily see each other as threats and they tend to ignore each other. However, my purple tang and my yellow tang both of the subspecies Zebramosa will fight each other because they see each other as being rivals and competing for the same territory. So if you're in a smaller tank that is suitable for tangs and you're only gonna be keeping two or three, I would suggest keeping tangs only one of each subspecies and that will minimize the aggression. Number three, and this one's kind of counterintuitive to point number two of having only one of each subspecies, but for number my but for my third point, and this is applicable for people with really big tanks, keep lots of tanks of the same subspecies. So, you, so if you have a very large tank and you're able to support 10 or 12 tanks, having five or six of the same subspecies 
will change their behavior. They'll no longer think of themselves as an individual fighting another individual for territory. They see themselves as a school and that natural schooling behavior starts to form and that can really help dispel aggression. Similar in the way that you can keep a clown harem tank where you might have 10 or 12 clownfish and they often will get along quite well. But if you try to keep three, two of them will pair up and attack the third one. Tanks can be quite similar. If you have enough, they'll school and the aggression really gets petered out amongst a much larger group and therefore no individual gets singled out and uh, unduly attacked or bullied. Tip number four for keeping multiple tangs is if you are introducing a new tang and you do find that there's immediately some aggression against them, some short-term solutions to help alleviate that, allow that new tang to um, acclimate to the tank, to assert their own dominance, and for the other tangs to get used to them, is to use a mirror or a proxy. Now, it may sound weird, but attaching a mirror like this to the side of the tank can be all it takes in some circumstances to dispel the aggression of the other tangs against the new tang. Uh, and the reason for that is that they're not the smartest critters in the world and they don't necessarily de detect that their own reflection is in fact them. They see the reflection in the mirror as another fish and that fish will never give up and never get tired before them. So while they're attacking their own reflection, they'll never win the battle, that fish just won't give up and it until I give up and leave, that's the only time it leaves, but by then I'm too tired to notice. And if I do get aggressive again, I'm gonna find that friend in the mirror or enemy in the mirror and keep attacking him. So the, the idea being that the most dominant fish in your tank is gonna see the fish in the mirror as the most dominant fish in the tank. Uh, you know, that good looking guy in the mirror. Um, and so that will allow the new tank in the tank to be able to acclimate, become part of the group, find their own spot while the bully of the tank is too preoccupied with their own reflection. Mirrors have worked really well for me. It was the way I was able to help alleviate the aggression between my purple and my yellow tang, where the yellow tang was the aggressor. Upon attaching the mirror, he spent most of his time uh, focused on his own reflection and allowed my purple tang to really settle in the tank, get comfortable uh, and start eating. I left the mirror on the side of the tank for about a month and that's all it took and within two to three days, there was almost no aggression between any of the tangs, but I kept the mirror there for the whole month just to make sure uh, and just to ingrain in that yellow tang's mind that he was no longer the boss of the tank. The reflection in the mirror was the boss in the tank. If you find that the mirror doesn't work for you or you don't have a mirror like this that you could attach to the side of your tank, something as simple as printing out on an A4 piece of paper a very clear picture of a large tang similar to the size and species of the bully in your tank can also trick them. Uh, it's not as dynamic because obviously a, a static picture in, on the glass isn't going to be moving, but they're not the smartest critters and they can sometimes also really go for just attacking a picture of a similar tang to themselves just as effectively as a mirror. Um, so yeah, try a few options, see what works for you. Personally, I found the mirror to work, but your results might vary. And finally, my fifth and last tip for um, controlling Tang aggression. This tip might not be for everyone and it is a little bit of a last resort, but if you've tried tips one through four and it's just not working and you're, you're concerned about one Tang being bullied too much or one Tang being too aggressive against the others, uh, removing that fish and perhaps keeping them in the sub or keeping them in a quarantine setup for a couple of weeks and then reintroducing them to the tank as the new entrant can change up and shift up the power dynamic and allow all the other fish to assert dominance, control their own territories and um, no longer be considered the intruders upon an established dominant fish's territory. So if you have a large sump, that can be an option for keeping your aggressive fish. Otherwise, you could potentially set up a temporary quarantine tank as an option as well. But as a last resort, removing that really aggressive fish to give everyone else a bit of a chance to heal and breathe and assert their own dominance in the tank um, can really shift up that power dynamic and break that cycle of tang aggression. Um, 
Of course, there is one final step, and if you reintroduce your bully fish and it just continues to be a bully again from day one, you might have to start making some hard choices around returning one of your tangs, either the one that's being bullied or the one that's doing all of the bullying, to your local fish store or trading him to another hobbyist or selling them. Um, that inevitably may have to be the final outcome if none of these tips have worked for you. But um, as a responsible reef keeper, it should always be an option that that's something you might have to consider in the worst case scenario, because the, the, the worst thing that could happen is that one of you allow one of your animals to be bullied to death by another one. But ideally it won't come to that if, if you're careful about your fish choices, you feed your fish appropriately, you choose the species wisely, you can use the mirrors and reflective tricks to um, distract the most aggressive fish and potentially taking that bully out of their environment, waiting a week or two and reintroducing them can all help alleviate tank aggression and help your tanks live in harmony with one another long term. If you've got other ideas for how to stem tank aggression and what's worked for you, post them down in the comments down below. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. My name is Marcus and you've been watching the Reef Nerd YouTube channel. Bye for now.